Lynn Vala for opening up her beautiful church, uh, this historic church, to be able to have this opportunity to speak here. Um, I am very honored to be here uh, in Seneca Falls during Women's History Month, just as many women before me stood right here giving their vision of the role of women will play in our future of this country. Seneca Falls is the home of the women's rights movement. In 1848, Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Lucretia Mott helped draft the Declaration of Sentiments, which focused on the inequities surrounding women, including the right to vote, the right to go to college, to own property, collect earnings, get married. It was the centerpiece of America's first women's rights convention held two years later. In 1923, three years after the ratification of the 19th Amendment, which granted the women the right to vote, here in this very church that we stand today, Alice Paul argued that the right to vote alone would not end discrimination. Alice Paul drafted the Equal Rights Amendment for the first time. These women, among countless others, were inducted into the National Women's Hall of Fame. But the fight is not over. We need to continue to work hard to implement policies that recognize women for their hard work every day. As I look around our state and think about ways to create economic growth and opportunity in this country, the strongest answer that I've come up with is empowering women to achieve their full potential in our workplace. The fact is, women are earning more than half our college degrees, more than half of our advanced degrees in this country. Women are the primary wage earner for a growing share of homes across this country. In 1960, only 11% of families in America with children under the age of 18 relied on the mother as the primary source of family income, just 11%. Today, that number is 40%. 40% of families with kids under 18 rely only on women to pay the bills, balance the family finances, make the tough choices we make every day around our kitchen tables, and provide for their children. But you wouldn't know that if you looked at America's workplace policies today. Congress and state capitals have simply failed to keep up with the face of America's workforce. Unfortunately, what that means is they are putting America's families on their back foot, making sure they cannot reach their full potential. So if you want to grow our economy, the key is women. The key is women reaching their full potential within our economy. Without a doubt, if women are given a fair shot, women will be the ones to ignite our economy and lead America's middle class revival. This relies on keeping all women in the workplace who want to be in the workforce earning a paycheck. Now for anyone who's ever had a new baby, a sick family member who needed around the clock care, an aging or dying parent, you know what the struggle's like of wanting to be in two places at one time. You know the tough choices you have to make whether you're going to keep your career or provide for your family member. It happens every single day. And more often than not, it's women who will ramp off, who will leave the workplace to care for that family member. This can cause deep and lasting damage to their financial security. Congress can and should do much more to support them and strengthen the economy by supporting paid family medical leave. I have a bill called the Family Act, which would create a self-funded paid family medical leave insurance program it doesn't add one dime to the deficit. Based on successful state models, it works by establishing an independent trust fund supported by both the employee and the employer, small amounts of contributions every week. It costs about the, cup, the cost of a cup of coffee a week to be able to have paid leave in this country. We also need to make sure we raise the federal minimum wage. Did you know that 64% of our minimum wage earners in this country are women? Now, I don't know if you actually know what the minimum wage is, but it basically means you are working 40 hours a week, earning $290 a week, which is $15,000 a year. If you have two kids, you are earning $3,000 below the poverty line. Nowhere in America have we ever said that we don't reward hard work. We have always said that the key to earning your way to the middle class is working hard. Well, that is simply not true for too many Americans. So under our bill that Tom Harkin is leading, we want to raise the minimum wage to 10 10 an hour, which brings their income up to $21,000 a year, so they can take a first step out of poverty and 
one step closer to the middle class. If you raise the minimum wage to 10, 10 an hour, you will be helping 33 million Americans, 17 million of whom are women. With that added activity in our economy, we can create up to 140,000 new jobs. We also have to recognize that women are often the primary caregivers for children. So we have to make quality, affordable daycare a reality in America. Today, more women have to go back to work sooner after having a child, creating a greater demand for affordable child care that allows them to stay in their job. But the cost of child care is upwards of $6,700 a year, is about the same amount of money that families will spend on groceries. If you have an infant in daycare, it's closer to $12,000. And so go back to that woman who's a minimum wage earner. She's only earning $15,000. So how is she ever going to afford affordable daycare for her and her family? And when you can't afford daycare, it means you have to stay home, which means you cannot be in the workforce earning a paycheck, earning for your family. And that continually keeps women reaching less than their full potential. We should also make sure that we double the tax credit currently on affordable daycare. You should be able to deduct about $14,000 for daycare expenses, uh, which would be a really strong middle class tax cut. And for families who earn less, you would have a tax credit up to $6,000 for two kids. This kind of reform would make a huge difference for affordability. We should also have universal pre-K. High quality early learning leads to strong cognitive, social, and emotional language development, key skills for a bright future. As every mother and father knows in this room, those first five years of life are crucial to the development of young children. Young children's brains expand and they learn so much information before they even start their first day of kindergarten. And if they don't have access to quality early learning, their likelihood of reaching their full potential is diminished. For every dollar you put into early childhood education, you will get $11 out over the life of that child in economic activity, according to the NIH. The block that you live on should not determine your chances in life. That's why we have to make this investment, so that every child in America can reach their full potential. And last, and certainly not least, we should have equal pay for equal work in this country. Still, in 2013, a woman earns 77 cents on the dollar for the exact same work. African American women earn 69 cents on that dollar, and Latinas earn 58 cents on that dollar. This has to change. More families rely on dual incomes or a mother's earn earnings as their sole source of income. If we don't pay women fairly, we are shortchanging our families and shortchanging our economy. If we, if we paid a dollar on the dollar, you could raise the U.S. GDP by up to 4%. There is no better economic engine than just paying women fairly for the work they're doing. When we have women now earning more than half the college degrees and more than half the advanced degrees in this country, we should be making these changes to reflect who our workforce is today. If we are ever going to out-educate, out-innovate, and out build the global competition, American women will have to lead the way. It is absolutely crucial that we update our workplace policies to reflect this reality. Only then will we see our economy grow and our families achieve the financial security that they deserve. These are five very common sense, nonpartisan solutions that I think we can all get behind. And only when every woman in America gets her fair shot to achieve her full potential will America achieve its full potential. Thank you for coming.